came back. So next lesson is overview on network protocol. Uh, I think this one's going to be a little bit shorter. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about um, as a, I'm doing a very quick overview, not really digging too deep into the, the weeds, if you will. So we're introducing the most popular network protocols used in the DDC industry. Um, all current controllers utilize one or more network protocols to communicate with uh, the BAS and um, field specific uh, applications or controllers. So some of you may have heard the story of the, the Tower of Babel. This was a structure that would reach the heavens and all these different people came together to build it. The problem is they all spoke a different language. So no one was able to communicate what they were working on, how they could work together, and the project failed. Right? Uh, so building automation is a very uh, similar situation. There's all these different uh, languages that need to communicate with each other if you're running different protocols. So the HVAC thermostat sensors, the chillers, the boilers, the air handlers, these must be linked and communicated with uh, the JS controller in order to give you inputs and to feed outputs. And so again, there's a lot of different languages. It's how everything talks together. And if you populate, populate a building with equipment that uses incompatible protocols, you're gonna have a building that doesn't work. So, key terms, uh, we dig into these on the next page, but uh, what I wanted to point out here is, in reality, the three main ones that you're going to hear the most are BACnet, LAN, and Modbus. Not to say that they're the, that's the end all, there's a lot more, which I'll show you some of the other ones, but those are the, generally the three that um, you're going to hear the most about. So here's the key terms. I got two pages this time. If you want to pause and read these. Page two, again, you can pause and read these. So like I said, the three most popular languages that you're going to hear, Modbus, BACnet, Lonworx. Modbus is, I think, the oldest. It was originally started for industrial applications. Um, still used pretty widely. Uh, but in the building automation system, you're going to see it mostly for energy applications, such as um, electric uh, usage on your facility, or um, gas, natural gas, a uh, pulse meter. Uh, some of that stuff will communicate through my bus to a JACE controller. And then the two other ones, BACnet and LonWorks, this is installed over millions of applications. Um, you'll hear a lot of arguments going back and forth between which one's better, uh, you know, my opinion would be BACnet, but you know that's a biased opinion. Um, BACnet was created by ASHRAE and supported by ASHRAE, and it's an open system or open protocol. Basically, they said back, um, I don't know when, but they said we need a protocol that is open, that everyone can use and communicate, and so there's not all these proprietary systems that have to use these devices and you have to use this. So actually we created BACnet. So a little more detail about those three, BACnet, LAN, and Modbus. And then at the bottom here you can see some of the proprietary and legacy networks. And so a big one here is Johnson Control. They use the N2 uh, protocol. Um, Honeywell, Train uses COM3. You know, there's a couple different ones down there. A little more information on LAN and BACnet uh, may have already been repeated in the other um, slides. Okay, so transmission, how do we get the message out? The protocol is the language, it's the English and Spanish of the in, uh, DDC industry, but how are those messages traveling? And so on the left side here, you can see there's a lot of different ways to get this information from one point to the other. Uh, most common is a multi-pair uh, wire or an Ethernet Cat5, Cat6, uh, but there's a lot of options. And on the right side, you can see how do they communicate over network types? Um, so BACnet, the middle one here is using MSTP uh, RS-485. And so wired versus wireless, hardwired or wireless. There's a lot of pros and cons to each, right? On the left side here we have wireless networks, the pros and cons. 
On the right side, we have hardwired or wired networks, pros and cons. And so again, it's really based on what the user wants, what the user needs, um, price, uh, mobility, um, is it a retrofit, is it new construction? You know, there's, a, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of reasons to go either way. And so with that, we're going to dig into the computer a little bit. So here you can see our main screen, we've logged in. Now we're going to open the navigation tree. If we look at this config file, we expand that, we expand the drivers file or folder, we can see the different networks that this is using to communicate. So Niagara, uh, N-I-R-O, I think you pronounce that Rio, uh, and then BACnet. So we talked about BACnet, right? Now if we expand the BACnet, you can see on the bottom here that it's communicating with two devices, the rooftop unit controller and then the fan coil unit controller. So if we expand the fan coil unit controller and we look at the points here, you can see these are all the points that are communicating back and forth between the JACE. So if you saw the last video, there was these color codes that talked about the different objects uh, so now you can start to see some of the orange ones. These are enumerated points. And so now if you look at the fan coil unit here, um, we got all the information that's displaying on the screen here is displaying on the computer. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to raise this temperature up. So we'll go to 79 degrees uh, on the computer. It should kick into heating. And we should see the heating demand go up. It may take a little bit here. So there you can see the heating demand jumped up to 100%. It needs to do it ASAP. Now if I bring this down, let's say the room started to heat up and it got down to 76.5, we should see this heating demand start to taper down. So there you can see it's 63%. And it may stay there for a little bit. And as we got closer and closer to our set point, um, it would continue to drop 14% uh, and so forth. And so likewise, if we brought this temperature down, uh, we're going to see the cooling switch over. And we'll see some of the changes that display on the computer. So you can see the swap over, heating went zero, cooling went 37%. Uh, and now it would run until it started to cool the room. Uh, would get feedback from the thermostat or the set points or the room temperatures. And you know, it would um, use its algorithm, its smart controller brain, and change that uh, demand for cooling. So we're going to collapse the fan coil unit and open up the rooftop. We'll look at the points again. So you can see all the points that are used here. Again, looking at our color code, uh, we finally have a gray one. So these are all the points that are being uh, used back and forth to communicate between the JACE and the rooftop unit controller. So on our touch screen here for the rooftop unit, all the um, displays are the same on the computer. I start to make changes. We're going to see the changes uh, on the computer. So you can see I raised the temperature up on the thermostat. The heating demand went up to 73% on the computer. Um, so again, if we did that for, if we lowered it down, the cooling demand would jump up as well. So that's all happening, you know, inside the JACE. Uh, the rooftop unit controller is a little bit slower, took about a minute to reset, but um, eventually it does work and it shows up. So one thing to point out is some of these are read-only. So you can see uh, this column here where it says write. So you have read-only, OK, OK, OK. So these ones we can't actually write to it. And so if we look at this occupied cool set point, if we right-click, we go to actions, we go to override. We could actually change this, right? 
set for 82 right now. So if we went 84, and then we did one minute, and you can see we could change this three hours, one hour, permanent, we could set a custom. But if we just did one minute, you can see it changed right there. Heating demand jumped up 200% immediately. And so it basically go for a minute. And I won't make you sit here for a minute, but I'll fast forward. So you can see the override shut off and everything went back to the way it was previously. Okay, so that concludes this lesson on uh, network protocols. Uh, we didn't dive too deep into the details, but wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the things that you're most commonly going to see in the field. Um, BACnet and LawnWorks, and occasionally Modbus. There is other systems out there, like I said, uh, Johnson Controls, JCI uses their N2 uh, proprietary uh, protocol. But for this system that we're dealing with, and a lot of the systems that I've dealt with, they've been BACnet. I uh, showed you some of the um, controller uh, points. You can see here on the computer, it's you know just for the rooftop unit thermostat. These are the points that are speaking through BACnet. And that's not to say that if you go to a, a facility, it's only going to have BACnet or it's only going to have uh, LawnWorks. There is ways to make these systems communicate to each other. So if you're using Tritium Niagara, such as this system, there is conversions or translators that can allow you to speak LawnWorks into the controller, to speak BACnets, and maybe a different driver that you install. There is ways to do it, right? So, you know, don't think that you go to a facility and it's only going to be one protocol. It may be several protocols. You just need to figure out how to get them to communicate to each other. So maybe a translator, it may be a device or a driver. Um, there's several different ways to do it. Uh, Hopefully you liked this video, this lesson. Uh, I hope you've been following along all the other training videos. If not, check them out. Um, as I'm learning, I'm hoping to teach you. I appreciate John from DDC Support Services. This is his training simulator. Uh, we're not sponsored by them. I bought this um, full value, full cost, but it, it's been a great tool to learn on, and I've kind of mingled some of his training with some of my uh, training that I've come across and created for my co-workers and so thanks again John for allowing us to use this and allowing us to use some of the training material really appreciate it so thanks for watching please leave feedback suggestions things that you want to see uh, anything that I could do better or dive a little deeper in again subscribe uh, appreciate the feedback thanks everyone